Great moments are born from great opportunity. So you're telling me there's a chance. Average oh, Joe's wins in a shocking upset. I feel shocked. You suck compared to me. So you guys are two prep school white guys to podcast. We are <laughs> underdogs. They stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I haven't even told anybody this. This is kind of crazy. <laughs> Hello and welcome back in to the Long Shot Podcast. We have a very special guest uh, with us today, and that is our dear friend, friend of the podcast, uh, friend of this group, younger brother of of a sorts to this group in general. Yeah, uh, and that and that's Franz Wagner. Franz, thank, welcome. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Ooh. it. No, no, it's great to have you here. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you may also notice another seven foot German who is <laughs> who's in the frame. Uh, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a little bit of a controversial figure. Some people love him. Some people <laughs> se- seem to not like room. him. Some people not seem to not like him very much. But we figured, you know. Franz is here. Mo's here. Let's just do a little brother special. Yeah. Uh, so we brought Mo back on to provide a little context. Uh, to you hold know, Franz accountable. Yeah, to hold Franz accountable. And to translate. To translate occasionally as well, even though Franz's English is significantly better than mine. <laughs> significantly. It's embarrassing. Um, but more so just to to really show some brotherly love. Uh, yeah. Because that's what this podcast People is definitely going to unsubs- unsubscribe after seeing me here for the fourth time this year. But that's I disagree different. with that. You have a lot of fans. Yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's let's get to our guest here, Franz. <laughs> how's it feel, man? <laughs> to, be, to be a to be a guest of the Long Shot Podcast. You know, you've had a lot of a lot of accolades in your career, but this has got to be up there with all of them. Oh, for sure. No, it's been a long time coming. We tried it in Orlando. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. And yeah. He was, like was you said, it? I'm a fan anyway, so uh, it's good to be here. What's your favorite episode? <laughs> <laughs> um. Wait, he did this. I'm going to give you time to stall. This is me giving you time to stall. He did this yesterday. Who'd you do this to yesterday? What? Uh, Some, we were ben, with. Some, yeah. At dinner. He said. Uh, yeah, he yeah. said he knew. He who, puts people. Well, on no, the I feel like sure. I feel like that's a very like blanket statement. They'll be like, "Oh, I listen all the time." Like, "Oh, really? What's your favorite episode?" That's fair. I do not listen to every episode. I, I will, <laughs> oh no, but you should say, say a single episode. I will say though. The Scott Van Pelt oh, episode. See, Great and I stuff. know that you guys liked it too because you guys said that in one yeah, episode. Yeah, so. that's good stuff. I go. mean, you could have said yeah. your brother's episode. He's had multiple. That wouldn't no, have been genuine. No. He gets that episode on a daily. Uh, yeah, that's true. Guy. That's a great segue. You guys, for those that, that uh, don't know, and I don't need to disclose too much personal information, but you guys <laughs> actually... Speaking of which, are you looking at my budget? <laughs> no. my you guys are actually roommates in Orlando. We are. Yes. Um, which is just... I, I've had the pleasure of uh, being over at your house for dinner a uh, handful of times. And, and what a pleasant environment. What a lovely <laughs> home you guys have created over there in, in Winter Park. How's that been? Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're really lucky to be able to share the experience just being in the NBA together. And also, obviously, with him going to college uh, when I was like 13, 14, we haven't had that time um, for a while now. So it's uh, we're enjoying it. So I, I lived with Mo. Uh, in Michigan, at Michigan, also in Michigan. But uh, I quickly learned he, he's a great roommate. Yeah, you know, I, I would say I that agree. first. But you know, he has his little his little things, his little moments. Everybody does. Is yeah. there is there anything in particular that really bothers you? Um, I mean, like there, I feel like always with the roommate situation, like one is a little cleaner than the other, and like wants certain stuff to be done a certain way. Um, I would say Mo is a little cleaner and always sometimes gets on my uh, nerves a little bit. Like, put your socks wow. away or like, big brother. I will know, say I'm gonna annoy like my one. hoodie is, is summer, but like the the one thing I will say like that's normal. I, I think to me like sometimes sometimes it's just a little lazy, um, but sometimes Mo is like so focused on his routine that he's almost like. Uh, not a nice person anymore. He's like mm. so focused on himself that he forgets <laughs> other people around him. Yeah, I well, think, give me an I example. Think, this is interesting. I think yeah. some people would just describe that as inherently selfish. Right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I no, know I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> it's in phases. It's in phases. Like sometimes he's like, for example, in the off season, like getting enough protein has been a has been like an emphasis for Mo. Yeah. And like, I mean, obviously, I'm in a s- similar uh, spot here. So right. sometimes when he makes his protein shake, I would I would love for him to ask me like, 
Do you want something? Like, do you want one you, as yeah, well? Do you yeah. want one? Do you, do you seems want Seems like snack? a pretty like interesting because yeah, this hasn't been like brought thing. up. Yeah. This hasn't been brought up. No, yeah, I think it's a good, it's a good time to air it out. It's a great, yeah, great time to air it out. Good to know that. Next time I'll I'll share my protein shake with you tomorrow. No, you don't got to share. It's just like. It's, it's well, interesting. Maybe I'll say no anyway. You got a shaker? I don't. Yeah, so that's the thing. I actually I actually can relate to that because Mo, not that we need to do a psychoanalysis of, of Mo as a human being, but Mo is a very unselfish person in no, general. No, yeah, I don't mean but he does have, But he does have these little moments, well, these little I, things. My thing is like, I know it's not consciously or like that he's like trying to be not a nice person. He's just so focused on his like own routine and that he wants to, he's very um particular in that way that he wants you know his routine to be that that way and sometimes you just you know forgets yeah. maybe the, the i'll take that moment. criticism i'll take no, that. It's, it's, it's all good yeah. that's the only thing um what does he do that bugs you honestly um i mean he's kind of touched on it i will say that there isn't really an age difference anymore when it comes to like um i don't know on the human side like i don't know i'm 25 he's 20 so at a certain point, it just stops. I mean, we all have siblings. It's like you're on the same level. But there is a certain, like, I, I've lived by myself for four years now already. So for me, like, I, I love things a certain way. And it takes me a lot of energy to compromise when somebody else <laughs> interrupts that space, if that makes sense. So Franz described it as clean. But to me, it would only be like, oh, I got to adjust in my head. It's not only my hoodie laying around, so... I got to like accept the fact that he works different than me and that's okay. But sometimes I struggle with that. Obviously I make a concerned effort that I'm not bitching at him. No, but it's also, I mean, I think it's very like, sometimes I think about that too. Like it's so normal. Like you said, you live so long now, like three, four years by yourself yeah. that, and I just got out of college. So having roommates that are on different schedules, like have different rhythms and are just different. It's just, and it took us a couple of weeks to get yeah, warm. Yeah. Like there were definitely some arguments in the beginning. And we were like said, all right. And I think everybody learned for himself. What are the things you have to accept in order to make this a pleasant experience for both? And ever, I mean, we've done a pretty good job, I would say. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I like your point, Mo, about how now you guys are both like adults, right? Mm -hmm. In a five-year gap. It's not obsolete, but it's, it's not as much of a difference. I mean, I remember when I first met you, Franz, Mo used to talk about you all the time when Mo was uh, a freshman and sophomore in Michigan. He's like, oh, I have this little brother. He's going to be a problem. He's going to buy me a house one day. Like he, he used to <laughs> he say this say stuff like all the time. <laughs> and then I would like see a video of you and I didn't have a lot of context. And you were like this tiny, super skinny, <laughs> like right. what, 13 year old, 14 year old. Yeah. At, at yeah. the time. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's, that sounds pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> um, but, but it was crazy to see then all of a sudden you're stepping on campus at Michigan and it's, that's in a span of four years. And like, obviously I wasn't around to see you grow up every day, but like you shot up and, and you became this, like became a, an adult, especially on the basketball court, like very, very quickly. Um, and in many ways, Mo, Mo was absolutely right about, about your potential. Um, not the house though yet well not the house yet i mean there's yeah there's <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of opportunity um right, that was <laughs> but i just want like because you guys have always had you guys have always had the older brother younger brother dynamic right but now you guys are like equals your teammates you're in, playing in the same league there's no longer that discrepancy was was there an adjustment period for that um i mean a little bit i think off the court it's one thing but also like on the court um just today like being in the gym and like seeing all those guys that you grow up watching and like you see and then i go to college and or, or mo goes to college and i see him play against those guys and like it was an adjustment for me when i got to college or when i got to the nba now to like be like oh you know i i belong here and i deserve to be here and play on that level um i think like off the court not so much of an adjustment for me. Um, it's just been really cool to have someone you can talk about basically everything um, that you don't just look up to anymore, but um, you know that shares similar experiences and obviously has made a little bit more experience than, than I have already. And um, you know, I think it's just super helpful for me. One thing to add to that, I think when you speak about maturity level, without giving Franz too much credit here, because he's still my brother, but 
um, that is something that has impressed me in France a lot because it is not easy after all to come from a different country, come to college, adjust regardless of if your brother did it, um, regardless of what you're standing is how good you are to do that and then come to the NBA as well and do it in that fashion. And also, I mean, on the court, we don't have to talk about how mature his game is, but like off the court to, to observe first and understand what's going on before you act. And I mean, France has been very impressive to observe from, from near, like from a neutral standpoint, even not even being his brother. If I was his teammate to say that, um, it's, it's very unique for a rookie to come in and act the way he has. So that's been very impressive to watch. Yeah, and what an advantage it is also, I agree, first off, um, but what an advantage it is for him, I mean, you guys both took such unique paths, but there's a lot of similarities in your individual paths, right? You both play for Alba, you both come to Michigan, and then, you know, you, you end up playing in the NBA, both first-round picks all the way through. So it's like, what an incredible opportunity is for you, and how unique that is for, for you to walk a very similar path to your older brother and you're doing all these things because I remember when you were going through the recruiting process, talking to Mo about I was like, "What's Franz going to do?" Because there was that there was a chance that you were maybe going to stay at Alba, yeah. and you ultimately decided to go to Michigan. What what was the decision there? Like, how much did his the fact that he played at Michigan and experienced his success and became a you know an icon? We were talking today. Legend. Yeah. We were talking. We were talking today. This guy is publicly public enemy number one in East Lansing. <laughs> You know, like no, there's a, still there's an accomplishment. There's sweatshirts of him yeah. dropping Nick Ward yeah. on the floor of the bracelet. <laughs> like that exists. But like so you get to see that and be like, I I want that for myself. But, I imagine. I mean, not the icon stuff, like that's almost like a little pressure, I thought, for me. Cause like oh, yeah. the people in Michigan, obviously they they know Mo for that and um they're gonna like kind of judge me off of that a little bit too, like when they first meet me. But just him going to the Michigan and also obviously listening to him talk about Michigan and um, say how great his experience was and also seeing the relationships that he made. Um, I think that was the biggest thing for me, um, that it was more of an off the court decision, honestly, um, than on the court. Cause I thought I was pretty uh, comfortable with, you know, my, my, the, the way it was in Alba. I think I had a great, great situation there. Really people that, knew their stuff and cared about my development as a player. And um, I just wanted something, um, you know, a little bit more like off the court, like experiencing a new culture, getting to know a little bit uh, new people. And I think that's that's helped me now and that I'm out of college, like um, adjusting to, to everything a little bit more, um, already having been out of my comfort zone once. I think that that's helped me a lot. Yeah, and you have somebody as you're going through it, who's gone through a lot of those right. similar moments. Um, I wanted, you, you mentioned pressure and, you know, you've been in those situations. You, you go to Michigan, you have a, a legacy to live up to. Uh, and then also, you know, you're, you're a lottery pick. Um, pressure is, is something that exists within our sport and, and we've all experienced it in different ways. But I, just as a, a friend of yours and an onlooker, I've always been, really impressed with it it feels like you have this steadiness about you and there's like a maturity mo referenced it earlier where is that something that you just kind of always have like and you see it in your game too like you have a very simple yet effective game where does that come from that kind of like level-headed because as a young player coming into the nba so often you see oh he looks great one night but the other night you know whatever for you 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 really developed a consistency, which is really unique for a young player. Um, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I mean, sometimes, like, in my head, obviously, people don't see, like, what I think about. Like, I would say that I overthink a little bit and, like, think about a bunch of different stuff as I'm playing and probably a little bit too much, and I'm trying to get better at that. But um, I think part of it is, like, just watching also Mo, like, um, or the NBA and just seeing how up and down every game can be, every season can be, how players can play good one season and the next one they're not or they're not even on the roster anymore. Like, um, I think just from that, like consistency and also knowing that, um, you know, the next day is not always guaranteed. I think um, just that humble approach, I think, is, is good for everybody. And 
also honestly takes takes pressure away from me a little bit to know that um, everybody's struggling and everybody's kind of up and down uh, at times. Um, but, you know, I'm honestly just trying to do my best in, in every practice, every game. Um, yeah. You guys also just come from such unique basketball backgrounds. Like if we're talking on court, I would imagine some of the steadiness comes from the fact that you've just been playing in professional adult yeah. grown men environments since you were a child essentially right i think it's so different because people in high school they i think i mean most guys that go from high school to college and then the nba they've been dominating most of their life and um, for me i was fortunate that i could play up with the pros or even younger like with older guys at a young age and i think you uh you know you fail a lot sooner and a lot more at that age and then um maybe that helps me now a little bit when was the last time you guys had a legitimate physical altercation? Now like we're I, getting the like stuff. I'm not talking like I'm not talking like I'm pissed at Mo or I'm pissed at Franz. I'm not going to speak to him. I mean like we're throwing like fisticuffs, like <laughs> real deal, actual or like wrestling, physical. physical? Yeah, be, like you and I have have like, and it's like joking, but like then it <laughs> but really not. then about halfway <laughs> but through, really it's not. then about halfway through it takes that turn to like yeah. I actually really don't like you right now, and I'm trying to inflict pain. Like, no, when was the last time that happened? Like, does that just happen on a random Tuesday night in Winter no, Park? No, no. Didn't happen all happen, this year. No, yeah. No, not at all. I mean, we played one-on-one, -on -one like, maybe like four or six weeks ago. That was the first time in years, and it was exactly for that reason, because it gets really heated really So you guys quickly. won't play? You guys haven't played a lot of one-on-one? -on -one. That was the first one we played since France was 12. How'd it go? That's Honestly, that's a that's a quality move by you. That's if <laughs> yeah, I was an smart. older brother, I would do the exact same thing. I would play my younger brother till I um, like to the point yeah. where you realize, oh, it's getting difficult to guard him. <laughs> and if it became at <laughs> all harder. close, like I'm not even saying like even if like he could like get off a move and like make me look bad, like I'm just opting out. Like I'm, <laughs> yeah, we're no. not doing that. <laughs> well, also that, and then also there are two reasons. It was convenient because I was gone. But we start we stopped way earlier just because it wasn't healthy. I mean, yeah. we don't do it either. Like we were working out on Friday in Miami, and the guy said, "Want to play one on one?" And Duncan and I go like, "Man, we gotta spend the next two weeks together." <laughs> that's not like I got there just that day. Like, let's not fuck it up right the first day. <laughs> Six hours in, Mo and I are just no longer speaking to each other. I'm probably bleeding from somewhere right. on my yeah, body. Yeah, sure. But I got. I mean, I, I'm definitely scratching you. I got long nails. Yeah. So Both do. <laughs> I have. Um, no, we did play one on one the other day. That was a little scrappy. But was it just you two, or was it like King? No. Like there was another yeah, person mixed in. Uh, Mo Mo Bamba joined us. See, so. that's that's also good too, because that's like a little bit of a buffer. That is true. Because it's like you can always kind of have that thing, like oh well, like you know, he scored on him this many times. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of like it's not as direct as just like mono right. mono. I mean, it's also like I would say that Mo always likes to take it like. Live by the edge, like you just said. Like, he takes it there. 100%. Yeah, he, he likes taking it there. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but no, it's it's well, fun. Well, let's not act like France doesn't talk shit. I mean, we'll, I will say we do a concerted effort, though, to even if it gets heated, to not let that affect our personal life. So if even that one on one, we Dude, had a conversation. You, hold on, you say that all the time, Mo. <laughs> like you used to say that at Michigan. You'd be like, "Dude, let's compete between the lines." But when we step off, we're still brothers. But you, you I would never. Say that. Yes, you would. But you would never live by that. And I always remember. It. And <laughs> that's like unrealistic. Like, yeah, when I'm pissed at you in the heat of competition, it's not like I don't like you anymore. But like, I don't then just want to like be your like buddy buddy right no, now. No, I understand that, but I'm like, not, I don't even mean that. That's unrealistic. I've, I've kind of. I, I will say that though. Franz and I like we had a conversation right afterwards. And then it was cool, and then we moved on. It what was the conversation? What did that consist of? Well, so my thing with trash talking, like if it's funny or like it's, it, I think it's part of the game, and especially in those type of scenarios, it's I think it's very important. Um, but when when it's like personal, like personal stuff, like talking about like oh your lottery pick you're supposed to like you're supposed <laughs> oh. to not let that happen i was like that one is a little too far and i was losing so like i was a little frustrated already. that's not that personal i thought you were gonna say something no. about like you know some that. like deep like hidden secret no, like, no 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 because that it, would be that well, it was well, it, it was about it was about like a contact contractual uh, uh i will say the frustration playing. the frustration came from not from france it came from Mo, and I carried it on to France, which 
rightfully so pissed Mo Bamba. Them off. Yeah, Mo Bamba, Mo Bamba. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I gotta get better at that. But also, like, that's not like a big. No, deal. I don't think you need to get better. That's like that's who you are, dude. We've talked yeah. about this. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, and then at this, what you said, like off the court, there are no fights really. Like we understand when each other are pissed, and then we would say, okay, maybe we're like, man. I'm not gonna fight, really. Like, we're, yeah, we're not gonna like, fight. Let's be real. It's like, not, it's not that. No, no. Do you guys see a scenario like, say, just for the sake of this, you guys both play the rest of your your years in Orlando? <laughs> do you guys see a scenario where you guys live in the same house the entire time? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like step brothers. Yeah. <laughs> like you, like you should have like your own families, just to like separate sides of the house, and you guys, you guys all come together for Wagner dinners. No, I, I don't see that. Happening. Don't, you don't see that happening. No, so you're I getting think, ready. You're getting like ready to move out. Like starts a family. I feel like. Yeah. Who's yeah, gonna yeah. be the first one to do that? That's like going aggressive, Franz. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Time will tell. We'll yeah. see. All right. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> Can I we, love that. I love that image of just a Wagner family. <laughs> yeah, re, you know, just beautiful in Winter Park. Yeah, that's great stuff. What are you saying, Dave? I want to talk about Franz's first rookie year because it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, his first rookie year. It was a really good first rookie year. <laughs> I just when you look back on the year, I assume you are happy with where it's at. Oh, extremely happy. I mean, <clears throat> that's what I said earlier. Like coming into the draft. Even being a lottery pick, like, I didn't expect, like, anything. I didn't expect, like, playing time because I know that, like, so many things have to go right for, um, or, like, things that I can't necessarily control um, for me to have a good season. And um, you, you can really just take the opportunity that's there. Um, and that's all you can ask for. And I got all the opportunity that I could, uh, I could get. I got so many, got so many reps, got to play a lot. Got to do uh, some stuff that I hadn't done at Michigan. So, um, you know, I got, I got to learn really quick. So we're coming up on Summer League. In fact, it's actually already started. It hasn't started in Vegas yet. But I was in attendance for your first Summer League game. And you and I have talked about this a little bit. But funny enough, I was sitting next to uh, Coach Beeline and Jeff Weltman, I believe. No. Uh, John Hammond. John Hammond. John Hammond. That's right. I was sitting next to Coach Beeline and, and John Hammond. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was a combination of, like, nerves or whatever. I mean, that's, right. you know, totally legitimate. But, like, you had a slow get-up in Summer League. Oh, for sure. And I had a slow course, Summer League. Just. Of course, like, yeah, <laughs> sure. Slow, slow Summer League. Um, of course, like, media wants to have overreactions of, like, oh, he's not uh, NBA, or, you know, all this garbage, whatever. Um, just out of curiosity, what's going through your mind you're like packing your bags. You're leaving Vegas. What's going through your mind at that point about just like your professional career outlook? Oh, I didn't think about that at all. I was just uh, honestly ready to chill just, a little bit because because last year we didn't have a lot of time after the draft. It was right um, get drafted and then a week after we were already in Vegas playing. So um, I honestly just tried to forget summer league as as quickly yeah. as possible. Also knowing that. I mean the pe the people in Orlando, they, the coaches, they told me that nothing's based off of summer league. Like yeah. you, you have so much time to um, get better and, and show what you can do. And honestly, I, I just needed some time to kind of forget about everything a little bit because so much time happens in pre-draft and then getting drafted. Like it's so much stuff you have to uh, think about and um, kind of let go too. So um, that I wasn't really thinking about too much about the season. I like that answer. Yeah, I mean. You also have this, you mentioned the great opportunity you got in Orlando. Right. Um, and, and really from the jump, it's not like, it's not like a scenario where you're like given the keys, but like you were kind of, it was kind of obviously known that you were going to be featured, but you took that in and ran with it to the point where, I mean, I remember us playing you later in the year and you were playing like point guard in, in some lineups. Right. With guys out and, and doing that sort of thing from just like an on court game standpoint. Do you feel like, 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 where do you kind of see this next progression of your game taking place? Yeah, I think, I mean, coming into the NBA, I think the first like 10, 15 games, maybe I was doing a lot off the ball. And I think, um, you know, when you're effective without needing the ball, I think that's always good and always gets you a lot of playing time. And then um, I think they just kind of tried some things out and wanted to see if I can play a little bit more pick and roll. And then the whole COVID stuff happened. So 
um, all of our point guards were basically out. So um, that, that got me uh, a lot more opportunity uh, running pick and rolls and making decisions with the ball. And I think, um, I think my next step is kind of just, first of all, being a more consistent shooter, but also off the dribble, being able to break, you know, defenses down and uh, creating a little bit more. I think that's something that I didn't really have to do last year or in college at all. I was more of someone to um, take advantage of when somebody created for me. And um, I think if I can create myself a little bit, I think that'll, that'll be great for me. Mo, since you very kindly graced us with your presence, I, I just want to give you the recognition that you deserve. And this is not sarcastic. I think you maybe are thinking that this is going to be sarcastic. But why would I? I, I seriously want to give you a ton of appreciation and love for the fact that every single time that I would talk to you about Franz, it was like in the most glowing, positive way you could possibly imagine. And I, I, we don't need to have like a moment here on this show because it's like, <laughs> kinda, say, I'm tearing it's up. like kind of like trending <laughs> here. But seriously, like as an older brother to be like so supportive and like just the way you comment about his game, the way you comment about his demeanor, how he works and everything, like I don't, you're a, like, I mean this generally, you're a better person than I am. <laughs> Well, in that, that is, in that regard, that in, in other, that in other is, ways, I'm obviously in other ways, I feel I'm far superior. Uh, <laughs> but in in that regard, like I don't, I don't know that I could do that to my about my little brother. I appreciate I appreciate that. Also, he, I mean, he's making me look very good because I've been saying these things True. for like. No, you've been pushing. You've been going all in on it for a while, and he's kind of surpassed that almost to a point where I look like a perfect scout what 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 it really is just pushing my family you know what i mean yeah. obviously i could see about you have no i'm guessing at that point like obviously you believe in, in your family and w one thing that i mean we both identify with that is like talent is always one thing but like what i always knew with franz is that he would work you know like he would yeah. put in the work um and with this that pair with the maturity level, like there's no way that can go wrong. So it's a pretty safe bet. Um, and I will also say that this steadiness is like not, maybe not the most typical thing for the Wagner Schultz like family in our household. Like we are more the emotional, like yelling, loving family that like says what they think, you know, and Franz is like very steady and consistent. And that's, I would, People would not describe us as such, I would say, as a family. So that is that is even more impressive to to be able to say, all right, I'm gonna do my own thing and I'll figure this out and be consistent with it. So um, that's as a big brother, it's like sometimes not easy too, because you're like, dude, I'm supposed to be the big brother. Like, you know, I'm supposed to be good too. And like I'm like looking up to him, like I, I would love to have that steadiness, that that calm that he has. Um, in certain scenarios uh, without giving him too much credit again. But um, I've been way past that point where I can admit that, you know what I mean? Throughout his journey, as you've obviously been a, a huge supporter uh, and, and support system to him, are there particular moments that stick out to you in terms of like, wow, like he's, this is even like beyond what I could have expected or, you know, whether maybe it's him playing at Michigan or, you know, because he, he obviously, the same way we all try to do, he's, you know, continuously pushing the boundaries of what we think is, you know, capable, right? Yeah, I, I will say one thing that has impressed me this year um, is his ability to show confidence and, like, do that with the ball. I, like, knowing that he can be a good off-ball player, like, he's from Europe, he's learned that, be a great teammate, pass the ball, know how to play, like, that's his forte. That's how he grew up playing. That, that, that's like kind of easy for him. Or us, I would say, as European players, that's kind of how we learn to play. But like, Is that a shot at American basketball? Yeah. I want to get into that. <laughs> no, we, well, we note that. We have we'll table that. that. We'll, we'll table come that. back to that. We have a great opinion about that topic. But I will say like he scored 38 against the Milwaukee Bucks. Like that's a good defense, right? Like <laughs> with Giannis and everybody. Like games like that, I'm like, bruh. Like he can score – in the pick and roll, you were stepping through that defense. I'm like, bro, where do you have that from? 
and it's it's not it's not about ability. Like everybody in the NBA can play. It's more about consistency. That obviously at a certain point, teams will see. All right, this guy's averaging 12, 13 points, fourteen points. Like we got to do something about him. They like look at him at the scouting report, and to do it over and over again, even after the fact, people are looking at you. That is very impressive. So that was one thing that honestly surprised me. People looked at me like. You told us, I was like, bro, I'm as surprised as you, like in a good way, like I'm happy for him. That's amazing. And one thing that sticks out to me, there's no particular moment, but that moment it is. I remember when he, I expected him to stay with Alba Berlin just because it was the perfect situation. He played 20 minutes in the EuroLeague. It was a made, like we say a made bed in German. Like it was the perfect situation for him. He's the face of that franchise, basically as a young Berlin kid playing there. And I thought for sure he's going to stay there. And then he calls me. I know it, I was in LA in the training, in the practice facility. And he calls me and says he had like a deadline till when he has to decide. And he calls me like ten minutes before calling the GM in Berlin and says, "I'm gonna go to college." And I almost shit my pants because that's like risk. Excuse my language, but that's like riskier, right? Yeah, like it's, it's for leaving sure. money yeah. on the table. And Juan like hasn't has right. coached it yet, so you don't know what's coming. And I was like, okay, why? <laughs> Scared as hell. I'm like, why? And he goes. Because I want to like prove it to myself that I can do it the hard way, like the difficult way, and not the comfortable one. And when he said that, I was like, all right, I ain't got to worry about nothing. Like he's gonna figure that out. Because if that's the motivation to prove that to yourself, like you'll be fine. Yeah, it is. It's really interesting because for you, that for sure would have been that. That was the hardest way because at that point you were already kind of. I remember there you were already like in draft conversations. Yeah. And you already had this role carved out for you at Alba. And I've come to learn that, like, for European players, and you guys could speak to this better than I could, but it's not like you have to be the best player on your yeah. team to get drafted in the first round. You just have to show potential. And you were right. already trending to do that. You were a year away from being a first-round pick. Yeah, if, if you play, like, the like 22 minutes and you deserve those minutes and you play – you know, a way that where NBA teams like can vision like can envision you playing in the NBA. I feel like you don't need to average. You don't even need need to average ten points. Like, right? You just you just need to kind of show that you can play professional basketball. And obviously, in college, you need to produce a little bit more. Um, so, like in that sense, it, it was a little riskier that I didn't really know how I was gonna fit in in college. If I was even gonna like it, like all that all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, it's it's riskier, but then you also have this upside as well in that you're now on this even playing field of all these other guys that are getting right. considered as lottery picks. And, you know, now all of a sudden for scouts, front offices, it's so much easier to compare you to them because right. you're playing against each other, you're playing in the same conferences, you're playing in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, you come out, you have a really good freshman year, and then your, your second year, uh, you guys went to the Elite Eight. Yeah, and I was actually at that game uh, in in Indy. Uh, that was a tough one, but yeah, tough. <laughs> it was a great, it was a great run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you bring that up. Sorry, I don't know why I brought that That's up. All good. Uh, um, but anyways, you, you guys remember the 2018 national championship? I remember. <laughs> yeah, dude, we talked about. It. <laughs> but anyways, you raised this Look ceiling of what's <laughs> possible, and that there's no way, or maybe I'm wrong, but there's no way you're a top five pick. Or, or a lottery pick, maybe, maybe if you stay at Alba. Well, yeah, possibly. I like my the way I thought about it, like basketball wise, or the way I like kind of leveraged it to myself that it makes sense to go to college because people in Europe they're like, you can't play as much basketball there. They're like, there's rules on how much you how much you can practice. Like, they bring up all this stuff why it doesn't yeah. make sense basketball wise, and um, the way I kind of talked to myself was that the kind of the American mentality on how to play basketball um, merging with the way that we learn basketball is is uh, you know can be a really good kind of um, combination so that's that's how I kind of looked at it that um, that killer mentality or like that competitiveness that people want to show to on the court if I can really like embody that and learn that in a, in a college setting I can't do that in Europe, so that's that's kind of how I looked at it. So, where do you guys stand on? Yeah, what do you European, mean? What do you mean by that? Yeah. The American way. Well, um, this is a great conversation. Like, I think it's just 
just in any like workout in America, like it's a little bit more outgoing in a com competitive setting wise. Like people like when people talk shit or that one on one matchup, like I'm guarding this guy, like this guy is not going to score against me. Whereas in Europe, the game is a lot more team oriented, whereas it's harder to like kind of make out oh, this guy just scored 30 on you. Like, you can't really, right. you can't really do that. Um, or you can't really do that as much. And it's just not inherent in the European mentality to, to look at basketball that way. Um, but obviously, the NBA is in America, so I, I thought it makes make sense. And to, Canada. To, and Canada. <laughs> so I, I thought it makes sense to kind of learn that before, um, you know, hopefully getting there. But yeah, I think it's also another argument like people always say, like, I would say the European basketball, like the EuroLeague on a level is better than way better than college. Um, but it's it's a completely different style. So learning college can, you know, sometimes even prepare you a little, a little better um, when, when you play 30, 35 minutes a game there and get to take a lot of responsibility opposed to, you know, getting 20 minutes a game and kind of playing off the ball all the time, you know. Mo. Well. Any comments? Well, because he seemed he seemed to just touch on like the, co the competitive nature of of workouts and the one on one matchups versus a little bit more team oriented. I feel like you have a little bit more to say. Well, it goes. <laughs> no, I mean what Fran said. It goes along those same lines. Um, what I'm thinking, like we talk about this all the time in Germany. I think Germany as a national team, for example, is extremely talented. Like when you look at our team. The biggest issue with Germany, and that's kind of the pro pro production or the, the result of what Franz is talking about, is that we don't really have like a star player. Like Dennis Schroeder might be the first since Dirk where you can say, all right, this guy can take a game in his own hands and is a superstar and has that aura about him. Like, but other than that, they're all super talented players that are role players. Um, and that's kind of the result of what Franz is talking about, where as in America, when you look at those teams, it's all, I'm really good at one-on-one. I'm really good with the ball. But learning how to play off the ball is, it seems to me more rare than um, that mentality of, all right, I'm going to go get 30 and then I'm going to get recruited because I have to play varsity. I'm going to go get 30 or 50 points. And so I get recruited by Kansas, Michigan, Kentucky, whatever. And then in Kentucky, I got to kill and I got to produce. And it's me, me, me. And I got to go to the league that way. So um, in Europe, it's different just because, I don't know what Franz said. You, you play off the ball. It's a team sport. Obviously, it's a team sport here. And I'm not saying the NBA is worth basketball. I'm not even saying that. I'm just talking about the styles and the mentalities. And it goes along those same lines with Franz was talking about the mentality of, I, I'll talk shit because it is about me, you know? Like, I'm cocky. Like, I think I'm better than you. In Europe, if I talk shit in a national team setting, like, I've been looked at weird. Like, what's up with this guy? Like, well, that's what I was going to say. so, obviously, that, but... That's confusing to me because you walked through the door at Michigan talking shit. Well, I was like, I'm home. <laughs> yeah, this is why you loved it I so can finally much. be yeah. me. Yeah, I was like, dude, I belong here, man. People, like... I came there and there were like 30 managers and when we practice, we have two coaches, that's it, just the players. So like, it's all about basketball. I'll be the only one talking shit. And I got to Michigan, they're managers. It's such a different energy. We have, I remember my visit, Bakari Alexander was talking shit to me. I'm like, all right, bro, I ain't got nothing to lose. Like, you know, right. I'll talk shit back to you. You don't know, you don't even know me anyway. Like I was like, I felt comfortable. Like this is what I want to do. So, but this difference obviously starts somewhere. And my guess is that like the youth system and the development system has a huge impact on that. So I know now what youth development looks like in the U.S. and that, you know, AAU is playing 12 games a weekend. You know, everybody has their own individual skills trainer where they're working on all this stuff. What is the, what is the difference? What is it looking like for you guys, for example, or maybe now, or maybe there's a difference between then and now of growing up in Germany, two kids who love playing basketball? What does that look like? Well, like, first of all, like, w one of the main things that I remember was, like, the coach, like, the coach was saying, like, 
if you guys are lucky, one guy is going to play professionally in Germany. And I was like, the like setting that like, no matter how good you are, like when you're 13, you always said like, nobody cares about that. Nobody even cares if you're good at 17. Like, Maris, if you're good at 20, like 21, like, and. Uh, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you were on draft boards at 17, <laughs> but I, I think some people care. No, that but point. that that's like the like mentality that that's right, where right, like, right. also that humbleness that's comes preached. from. Right. 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 And then I remember doing drills where we couldn't dribble. Like you had to get 10 passes and that was a point and you play it to five points or something like that. Or you only have one or two dribbles and you play three on three, like stuff like that, where it's so annoying. Yeah. If you don't move (laughs) though, if you don't move off the ball, you're not going to score. Like that's just how it is in those drills. Whereas here, like you said, a lot of guys, they don't, they don't even practice with teammates. They practice more shooting all these step packs when they're nine, 10 years old. Why? Because Steph Curry is doing them in the game and, and it looks cool and it works for him, but right. um, they see the finished product. Right. Yeah. Well, they also see one of the best players to ever do it. That's they like, do it, yeah. I can watch Michael Jordan clips all day. I'm not going to do that. Also one of the best off ball players ever. Yeah. Also, it's, go ahead. Also social media, I think is a big, is a big thing. Like, Love that. Ballers, life, mixtapes, like, it people, glorifies that pre- stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure people will grow up and are like, oh, man, I want a Ball is Life mixtape like John Wall. I, I, yeah. I grew up like that. Yeah, and th- yeah like, for sure. I My mean, game wouldn't why, reflect that necessarily, but I, I did want a Ball is Life Yeah, mixtape. and that's, that's why, I, I mean, I'm sure that's why it's normal that a lot of players like playing more with the ball in the U.S. I think it's And it's again, normal. before this turns into, a, like, the two Europeans hate on the American basketball system because I, re- like, Every time I have this conversation, people come like, so why are you here? Like, there's positives and negatives to both. And we're, like, not judging in that sense. It's more, like Franz just said, he went to college because he wanted to kind of merge those two yeah. opportunities, you know? Like, that makes a good player. And it translates to the NBA, honestly. And I said the negative, too, in Germany, that we don't really have a star that can give you 30, 40 points if he wants to, except for Dennis Schroeder. So, like... And he's really good at the American mentality as well. So it, it both has pros and cons, and it's not the old school European way is the way because right. we don't believe that, I wouldn't say. But I think it's interesting too because it does translate to the NBA as well, like the, the approach of finding your role and knowing what you're good at because not everybody is going to dribble 10 times and pull up for two. Like Bradley Beals of the world, Kevin Durant's, I don't know, whoever, like they are going to shoot those shots and you got to f- figure out a way to be effective without doing these things. And in AU, you might be able to do it, but in the NBA, no, there are only a handful of guys that get those shots. Yeah. I, I think uh, Franz spoke to it really well in that you were saying early on in your career, you're like finding ways to be effective off the ball. And then, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Orlando Magic. Obviously, just mostly because of you guys. So I, I, I watch a lot of your games. Um, but I remember like later in the year watching you, you developed all these like M, quote unquote NBA moves, right? Like you're finding hands, drawing fouls, you're doing Euro steps, you're doing all these things. So it's like, I, I completely hear what you're saying in terms of the foundation of, of learning how to play the right way, moving without the basketball, figuring out ways to still be effective combined with you know, the ability to, to create your own shot. Because, like, at the end of the day, no one walking through the door, I shouldn't say no one, very few people walking through the door are, like, being asked to, hey, we need you to go get yours 18 times right. a game. Right? Like, you have to show that you're effective in those other areas first. And, you know, I, I think you guys are both really good examples of that. We've talked all the time, you, like, after your first couple of years, like your big thing was like, I'm just going to simplify my game, oh, which is like, is. Yeah. that's so funny because people always think about, oh, you know, year, he's getting to year three, four, five, like he needs to show that he can do like these other things. It's like, no, no, actually I need to show like that I can just do these things really well. You exactly. simplify it. Yeah. Whatever said. Well, one thing Franz and I talk about too sometimes, just take another route here, like as European players, like. You've been, I don't know if it's humbleness, but like there are some American players that just, it's not, again, it's not ability. It's just the, the sheer power of your thoughts and your mentality where they think they are it and then they play that way too. 100%. And that's like powerful. Yeah. And I sometimes think like, I wish I had that. 
you know like i think that way about it too that like that's an advantage to have if you have that power to say it, where it just clicks and says man i'm that man like yeah. the man in the arena and nobody can take that away from me like that's the most anti-european thing you can say in the most american mindset you can have like i can't find that like that's not that's not natural to me so when you see that on the court sometimes i'm like bro i wish i had that. like i'm jealous like that's dope i've i've talked about it on this this podcast before and i use the term irrational confidence but yeah. i say that like in, in, in an endearing way yeah right. in that there are guys that they could miss five in a row and they think that six one is 100 percent going in and they're shooting it they're letting it fly with the same amount of confidence and like in your mind, he just missed five. It's irrational that he would think that that's going in, but they just have that unshakable. And a lot of the best players do, but like you saying you don't have that. I would actually argue that like anything, that's like a skill that can that. be developed and 100%. grown. Like I look at, I look at myself, I'm not by any means, I don't have that, but I've grown exponentially from other parts of my career in that regard. I've, I've seen both of you. I've seen you on the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> see you on the Wait podcast. Wait until we reference me. <laughs> Grow in that way. You're starting Thank to you. get irrational comments. You're doing crazy shit. You're having my mom on. You're having all sorts of people Come on. on. No. Anyways, like I've seen you guys grow in that way, like throughout your careers as well. Like, dude, watching you as a sophomore give Louisville 26 in the NCAA tournament, that was like, you cannot fuck with me. Like straight up like vintage mo Weezy. and i've seen you and i've seen you do the same thing 38 against the bucks like it's like you guys say oh we're these fundamental like whatever but like you guys have that same shit too. well sure. well i think what mo said it doesn't come natural to right. him or europeans uh most of the time like it does to some some guys that grow up here and like we just touched on like it's part of how you grow up and like in which culture you you kind of learn uh, how to play yeah I don't know. You had a lot of that the other day in open gym. Well, yeah, open gym is a different thing. But then also, like, I okay, we talk about Europeans here. Like, we got to acknowledge that three of the five or six best players in the NBA right now are right. European. Right. Very true. And we're, like, not – obviously, that's not, like, the simple side that we're talking about. Like, Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, and Giannis yeah, and Peter yeah. are not the, the, the people we're talking about here. Like, off-ball, learn, and all that stuff. It's just – and I, I'm pretty sure that Luka Doncic has that irrational confidence too, and it comes pretty natural to him. For it sure. Seems. So I just wanted to mention that. But yeah, obviously, open gym helps to grow confidence. I mean, it's confidence at the end of the day. That's what it is, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I have an open gym question actually for all three of you because I watched you guys play yesterday and I was fascinated by this because you guys were playing to 120, just total score. And it was like, it got to the point where it was like, next bucket wins. And there's this unwritten rule in open gym basketball that exists in every level. Like, I see it when I play at Lifetime Fitness, and I saw it with you guys yesterday too, and it was eye-opening to me because you guys are all so good and so capable of getting your own bucket. But when it gets to that point in the game, it's very clear who's taking that shot. And it's that person or nobody else. And I wonder what that's like to be in a situation like that as a other professional athlete. Like, wait, I can do that too. Well, to clarify, I just want to make, make yeah, clear. That's none of stage none of us were the ones taking that right, those yeah, shots. It's at the table here. Um, yes, correct. But I mean, yeah, it's it's a role though, like I, that we're all kind of used to playing. I would, I would say. say. So, yeah. um, but we were. I mean, I don't know. This guy was. No, no, I'm not taking that shot on that team. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very confident I won't take that shot. But never, like not after the fifth possession where it hasn't worked. I'm not going one on one. I'm in that situation. I am. I'm trying to initiate some action for someone else, <laughs> and if I'm ending up wide open at the three point line, or the time runs out and I have a good shot, or it's an easy drive, like something like that, then I've done my job and I take that shot. Um. You won't go out of your way to it, like get. It, this is not the game. time to be yeah. the hero. That other people can do that. If they throw me the ball, I'll be shot ready. Though you better believe it. <laughs> and look, they, oh this God. person was is one of the best scores ever. To I feel like game. we don't need to be cryptic. I feel like you can say it. Yeah. It was Kevin Durant. Yeah, I didn't know if we needed to be 
But, no, so we, don't need, we don't need to name drop on this. I think our community is, is solid as is. But I think it's it, obviously, yes, if you are trying to win a game, it makes sense to have the ball in his hands. But it was just interesting to me to see it because, again, like it, just, it makes sense when it happens at Lifetime Fitness and there's one guy who's like. Yeah, and there's the two other guys. One's an investment banker and the other exactly. guy works, works insurance. Yeah, Correct. the guy who used to play Division One basketball should probably exactly shoot. Exactly yeah. right. You're right. And look, maybe the gap between Kevin Durant and Mo is also that big, but. Wow. My point is, I don't think Wait, it is. Wait, hold on. Yeah. I will also, not stand not. for the slander of our guests on this podcast. <laughs> Even though I don't think Mo is a guest anymore. I think Mo yeah. is a, first of all, he's, he's another an unwanted co-host. host. This title is just, the title of this episode is just going to be Franz Box. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Nice. No, my point is, the reason I asked the question is, it's not. That's my whole point. Is the gap isn't as big. Yeah. Well, you were cooking. So maybe you get a shot oh, at some point. I was also, it's, all, it's all relative. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's all relative. <laughs> and it's also open shots that I was making. It's not like, that's, it's just different. And Kevin Durant is going to take that shot. Period. Yeah, fair enough. And we're yeah, all happy sense. about that. I'm very happy and about that. And we're going to live and die by that. Yeah. 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 That's, no looking that's, back. Just, that's just the unwritten rules of basketball, my friend. All right. You know, I was just curious. You're starting to, you know, Involve yourself in the media space. These are things that you need to take note of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can see that Davis and Duncan are going through something right now. A little yeah, do you guys ever a little bit of a rough patch? Do you can... two ever need like space from each other? Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah. We're, we're we're going through that right now. No, I legitimately don't like Davis. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I love Davis. No, I think we found a good rhythm uh, at home. Of kind of like we're basically together. Obviously, we're going to practice and then. Once we come back from practice, everybody takes their not nap, and we're kind of away from each other until almost until dinner, probably. We make a conscious effort to not be on top of each other all yeah. all day. Well, this this is our issue: is that I'll call Davis pretty frequently, and I call Davis, and I'll be like, "Yo, did you see that song that just came out? Yo, did you see that thing that just dropped? Or, uh, hey, like, what's going on, man? How's your day going?" He calls me. The only thing he ever wants to talk about is the podcast. <laughs> hey, did you book a guest? Hey, when are we doing this? So it's like, it's really hard for me because I'm just trying to be in friend mode and he's just nonstop trying to be in work mode. Yeah. So, Davis, let me ask you I'm this. Trying question. to run a business. Have I, I, have, I, I, I might have asked you that question before in this podcast, yeah, but hit me. Um, how is it to work with Duncan? <laughs> like on a professional level? It's, ama- it's amazing. I'm convinced I have the best job in the world. Joey earlier was telling me that uh, you guys went to Aloe today, and he was like, it was sick. I think the guy who was showing us around might have the best job in the world. And I still would take mine. No, I'm, I I'm can't inc- wait for that butt. I'm incredibly but. grateful for this guy. There's a butt coming. Yeah. But <laughs> you guys are so busy that it's impossible to track all of you down at times. And there's a lot of stuff that we need to talk about every week. So when I happen to get him on the phone, there is some podcast stuff that needs to be discussed. That's well, I is. share that issue with you. I mean, Duncan is extremely hard to reach. Right, yeah, exactly. Extremely just, difficult. He so he picks and chooses. It's on his schedule, which I kind of respect, busy. too. He's busy. I just want to talk about the new Bieber single every once in a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why do we have to talk about, you know, front of show and what ad reads we have? Why can't we just talk about <laughs> what's going on with Justin Bieber? He just canceled his tour. We haven't even talked about that. Yeah. He, he has, like, cerebral palsy in one side of his face. And we watch two of his shows. Yeah. We are, this couch is believers. I can't speak for Franz. No, Franz I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Okay. I'm a believer. Okay. I was at the concert Can we go too. rapid fire Franz questions? Okay. Just if you feel one, throw it All out. All right, you go first. How did it feel uh, to dunk on the entire city of New York when you dunked on the Knicks? And Minnesota. And, and Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota was and more Minnesota's better. not a city, though. <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs> Minneapolis. Which one Minneapolis. Was, which one was better? <laughs> which one was better? Minneapolis. Which one felt better? Yeah, Min- Minnesota, because it was the, the first one. And like, Honestly, I kind of surprised myself. I just like, it was like, like a millisecond where I just like said like, yeah, fuck it. I'm, I'm just going to do it. And then it we worked out. We just got Franz Wagner to curse on our <laughs> podcast. Yes, yes. Let's go. You're like, how did I get up here? No, yeah, it was, honestly, I kind of surprised myself. And it was cool. We uh, we talked about this the other day. We we watched the highlight like right after in the, in the locker room. For 10 minutes. Um, they kept running to play and everybody went crazy. And it was one of, the, like, one of the first 10 games. So um, it was really cool. Amazing. All right, I, I have a question, and then Mo will put a ball on it. Uh, what was your first impression of me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember when I first met you. I was oh. probably at the house. 
I'm pretty sure it. I met you. You were shooting around uh, in our practice facility at Michigan. You were a young buck. You were probably 15, I think. Oh. Um, and I want to say you guys actually played one on one then, but it was like kind of like joking one on one. Yeah. Um, and I was like watching you guys play, but I mean, obviously you don't remember that, so that can't be your first impression. So I didn't make much. Of I don't remember. I mean, honestly, I heard a lot of great things from from Mo <laughs> about you. Um, Tell me about some of those things. <laughs> no, like just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, the first impression when I was 15, I probably didn't like remember too much. But sometimes it's funny, and I, I said this the other day that I see that Mo picks up some of the things that you do a lot. Uh, asshole which, things. Which. I mean, some of it is not <laughs> always like pleasant, but <laughs> I, all right. which I think that. is normal. Like, because like obviously you guys hung out a bunch uh, at Michigan, and uh, I'm sure Mo just unconsciously picked up some stuff from from the the other way around too. By the way, yeah, yeah for sure, so, guys. I gotta say, you know, we've been living together out here for a few days in Los Angeles, and we got a great big brother. To middle brother, <laughs> to little brother dynamic going on here. I really feel like I'm the big brother of the Wagner family, and I'm I'm a, I'm the youngest of three, so I've never been able to be the big brother. How does it feel? It feels really good, <laughs> honestly. It's a role that I could get used to playing. Do you speak about your younger brothers the way that he speaks about his younger? Brothers? No, 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 not, not at all. Not at all. Okay. Uh, I I prefer a different method. Uh, tough love. <laughs> you know, I I like to kind of like throw jabs. Uh, a lot of like kind of hurtful comments at them and, and build them up that way. Break them down to build them back up. No, that's impressive. Mo, what's your rapid fire question for Franz? Um, what's the least favorite thing about the NBA? That's a good question. Probably the the importance that's put that is put on like unnecessary stuff like social media following, like just clout in general. Um, points stats like all that stuff i think um it, it was so important for me this year to like kind of find a new relationship with social media to like not get caught up in that kind of stuff and that has helped me like as much as anything else honestly during the year to like keep like honestly like like to always like coming to work and like playing again and um always be excited for that and also not get caught up if I have a bad game or if I have a, if I have a good game, like, um, you know, being consistent, I think that, that has helped me so much uh, kind of just staying away from it. I have one more question. What do you think about that journalist that didn't put you on any of the question. three yeah. rookie lists? Talk your shit. Dave McNiman. McNiman? McNiman. I know him, so it's extremely embarrassing. That Dave McMiniman. Yeah. What do you think of... there's two lists. So it's only two teams. Okay, and he didn't put you he on didn't any of those on. teams. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> like, you were Rookie of the Year candidate. No, I think it was surprising. I think uh, there's a lot of arguments for me to be <laughs> on the first or the second list. Be honestly. honest. Like, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. I was surprised. I'm just going to leave it at that. Maybe maybe you forgot me. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe That's you forgot ridiculous. me. We, we didn't have That's a great record. <laughs> That you haven't awesome. been watching Orlando Magic basketball. <laughs> How about who is your favorite? Who are you most impressed by in your rookie class other than yourself? Um, Maybe not most impressed by, but like of the of the top, let's say those two teams, of those top 10 guys. Class. Like whose game do you like the most? Whose game do I like yeah, the most? That, um, I have an appreciation for. I, I really like Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes. I think what I like about them is that they affect the game not just on the offensive end but also defensively and they do so much other stuff that you know maybe like they don't need to hit like all these crazy like jumpers or stuff like that or need to create on the ball all the time they they're good on playing off the ball and being effective in so many so many ways which I think makes them so much harder to guard because you can't just relax when they don't have the ball um, um and Josh Giddy, I, I love watching watching him play so all good guy. All good answers. All right, guys. Well, this is a good time. This was a good time. Hey, thanks right. for you. You talk a lot, and you're so different. So thanks for sitting down for an hour and of talking. Of course, no. Thanks thank for you coming guys. on our podcast, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We've been it. trying to do this for a while, but I always say better late than never. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I came up with that one. Uh, yeah, you coined that one. Yeah. All right. Cheers, guys.
Cheers. Oh my God. <laughs> Tips of the microphone. <laughs>